lesbian in the home of Jim and Marie Van Cleef. Jim, I come in and I, I notice a lot of beautiful pieces of furniture. Would you tell us about some of them? I hate the others, Tom. <laughs> See, that's good. <laughs> well, Tom, this entry hall table I made several years ago, and thinking it might be a little plain, I undertook ways to decorate it, and I added uh, this maple veneer on the upper part of the legs, and I added a cherry cock bead around the table, and then I put in string inlay in the legs. And what I would like to talk today about is string inlay and how you do it and so forth. Now there are a number of methods of decorating otherwise plain furniture. I can think of uh, veneering, carving, adding cock bead, string inlay, elaborate inlay where you make a flower pattern or some scene from inlay material. And I'm sure there are other ways that Tom could think about. Uh, this string inlay is not a new idea. I have a couple of publications here I want to get and show you. I have a fine woodwork here in 1996 and on page 58 there is a very good picture of a tabletop with string inlay around it. This is a How to Do It article. In a book I have, which is The Art and Mystery of Tennessee Furniture Prior to 1850, there are a number of pictures of furniture and they've established approximately the, the time that these pieces of furniture were made. I want to show you a chest of drawers that has string inlay on it. This chest has string inlay as well as veneer inlay in the corners. Uh, they've dated this table to 1800 to 1810. So this is not a new process. People have been decorating their furniture for a long, long time. I'd like to take you and show you some other pieces I have that have been decorated this way since that's our subject today. Jim, before we leave, I've I noticed this box. Do you mind if I pick it up? Don't drop it, Tom. Uh, but I noticed this, and I noticed some very shallow relief carving on the front. It's subtle, but it's very detailed, and, and it just really caught my eye. The top, this burrow walnut. Yeah, it's an old knot that was to be thrown away, and I couldn't see throwing it away. Mm -hmm. Take a bit more. Okay. So he can see it. This is made out of cherry. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. Well, as you know, I've made a number of boxes in the last couple of years. I enjoy that. Well, Tom, let's go back and look at some other examples of string inlay since that's our subject today. Be pleased to. You lead yeah, the way. Let's, let's go. I want to show you some bed steps I made several years ago that has string inlay in it. Now, bed steps are a thing of the past because back in, before we had central heating systems, beds were built high to get away from the cold air down near the bottom of the room. And women could not climb into the bed the way they can now. And here is a set of bed steps that I made that I'd like to show you. I, it's my design. I saw several pictures and I, I did this the way I wanted to do it. The uh, string inlay I wanted to show you is in the treads, and just that simple. I put grooves in it, cut wood to fit, glued it in, and sanded it smooth. And I think it's a very effective way of decorating furniture. Well, it sure is beautiful. Thank you. Jim, I see you also have a bench with some string inlay. Yes, I have a pair, a pair of them, Tom, one for my wife and one for myself. Uh, now this over here. over here. This string inlay is a little different because the white material is not wood. It's a 
a plastic wood filler, and we'll talk more about that later on. This was an experiment I made to see if it would work, and so far as I know, it's worked very satisfactorily. Well, that sounds interesting. And I can't help from uh, admiring your beds. Now, do you know, did you make the beds? <laughs> well, I would have if I had been alive, but... <laughs> Uh, according to my father, his father made the beds. His father was born in 1850. I died in 1920. And my father thanks him. My grandfather made the beds. Well, uh, I can't not establish that. But, well, that's uh, very interesting. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Did a good job, by the way. I sleep well. If you would like, let's go and see one more piece of furniture. And then I want to go out to the shop and let's talk about how we do this. Oh. That would be good. That's fine. That would be good. Jim, I just noticed this piece here with the cock meat around the drawers and the inlay places it well within the federal style of furniture. Would you tell us about this? Yes, I made this about four or five years ago while I lived in this house. And this is the strang bead we're talking about today. And this is a real wood strang. It's not, not especially fine. Uh, not especially narrow, mm -hmm. but it, it sets off a piece of furniture. And that was fairly easy to do. You do that with a router. And uh, it's not necessary to uh, put your decoration on all sides of the leg. Put it on the side of the front. That people see. That you see. That's right. Uh, what about the mirror? Did you make the mirror as well? I made the mirror as well. Yes, I did. Um, the box here is uh, unique and unusual. and in various ways. Well, the box was I noticed made, the shape of it is a little the different. The box was made as it is because I had this beautiful piece of, of a figured wallet that the cameraman see this and if I cut it down to a conventional size there wasn't going to be anything left so I just made the box to fit the top. Well that's, that's like unique. It. I like it. Well thank you. We need now to go out to the shop and let's talk about how we do these things we're talking about. Let's, let's do it. Okay. Jim, now we're in your shop and I would like to see how you do some of your the process of inlay and stripping. Yeah. Strip I'll, show you, I'll show you how we do this, Tom. Uh, what we're going to do first, we're going to cut a groove in a piece of wood to inlay a strip of wood. In. I, We'd like to cut these grooves as narrow as you possible. It's hard to find a router bit that's smaller than one eighth of an inch in diameter. I have one in my router here that measures about 105 thousandths, which is a lot smaller. It is something like this, except it's square ended. Now I didn't show it to you because we, we have it already installed. So I'm going to go over to the router and cut a groove in this piece of wood. Okay. And the way I have it set up, one pass is done. Okay? Okay, now I'm going to turn the router on and cut this groove and it'll go very quickly. Now the depth of that really is not very deep. This is approximately an eighth of an inch wide and that's oh, 100,000, 75,000 deep. Your depth ought to be oh, at least half as deep as the width of your stock is. But it's optional, you can do what you want to. Incidentally, if you're doing this for a table leg, which is a much longer piece than this, you need to make all your legs the same and you need to have them start and stop at the same point. Now, the way I do that, and you can improvise your own, I take a piece of wood and strap it on to my router table. And I set the box at the end where it stops the leg at the beginning and the end of the groove. Now when you turn the leg around and do the other side, you've got to redo this. So you need to do all one side of your leg, then you turn this thing around and do the other side. Alright, let's go over here now and let's 
show you how we fit a piece of wood that's going to be the light colored string in the stock. Now this is a piece of stock I cut off some scrap and it is a pine of some variety. I have found that shelving, this 11 half inch wide shelving, has pretty light colored wood and works well for this. Now traditionally it was holly. Uh, holly is a little hard to find, maple is available, but you can use any light colored material that you like. Or if you want to, you can use ebony and use black stuff. Now this is a piece of wood that I cut up and it won't quite go in there. So we're going to do a little trimming on it. This paper. I put it over there. Right in there. Now I'm going over to the table saw to the bandsaw. Now I'm going over to the bandsaw and cut a strip off. It's about one and a half times as high as the groove is deep. You want some stock left over. It's bad if it's below the surface. So let's go do that. Alright, now I've cut my strip off. And we're going to put it in the groove. And it fits nicely and it sticks up, as you can see, about that much, which is not excessive. And I'm going to glue it, let it dry, and trim it flush. Now we have a bead, a groove cut in our stock and a, a piece of wood for a wood string strip glued into the stock. We're going to plane it down flush with a hand plane and scrape it smooth. This is what the string in it looks like. I've too smoothed it and it's ready to be finished. I have an example. Some time ago, this block of walnut has two different sizes of, of string inlay in it. Now we'll talk to you about what we call a scratch stock. A scratch stock is a little homemade tool it slowly but quickly, if you can be that way, cuts a groove, and I'm going to show you how you make one and how you use it. Now, if you don't want to make one yourself, you can buy a commercial marking gauge, such as this, and you can take the pin out and you can make a scratch lock out of it. But I hate to ruin a good tool when you make one for practically no labor. Let's go over to the blackboard now, and I'm going to talk about this scratch stock. Now, this is a scratch stock, and I want the camera to get close, and I'm going to point about features in this scratch stock. This is a homemade tool. It's made of three pieces of wood, five screws, and a piece of hacksaw blade. If the camera can, I want him to show the tooth on this scratch stock, which is right here. Now that tooth is about a sixteenth of an inch wide and sticks out a little more than a sixteenth of an inch. This piece is your guide to hold the distance from the edge. Now, a lot of you will wonder, how do I make that out of a hacksaw blade? Well, I'd like to show you. So let's go to the blackboard now and talk about it. I have a picture on the blackboard of this, the, the tool insert in that scratch stock. This is a piece of hacksaw blade. Cut it off about an inch and a quarter long. Now if you don't know how to cut it, you can use a grinding wheel, you can 
grind it down smooth, you can put it in a vise and work it back and forth till it fatigues and cracks. You can cut it off with a dremel tool with a little cut off wheel, however you cut it off. And don't get it too hot. And then you go to your grinder and you grind this metal away until this sticks out no more than three thirds seconds of an inch. This tooth here is a sixteenth of an inch wide. Now it tapers to here. Oh, it's about a five degree taper. And the reason for the taper is the tooth will center itself in your groove and not walk out when you're scratching your stock. This still has the teeth on this edge here. Then I clamp. I'm going back to the scrap stock. Look, cut a minute. I clamp this so that the teeth are within the wood and the teeth keep the blade from working out. And that's all there is to a scrap stock. Now I'd like to take a piece of wood and go over to the vise and show you how it works. All right, now I have my stock in the vise. I'm going to scratch the groove. Now you start with your scrap stock with a fence up snug against your work and you tilt it or tilt it so it clears the work on the side away from it. That means that your tooth just touches. Then you just drag it down through there. It doesn't cut very fast. This is not for a hurry fella, but you'd be surprised how quickly it gets it done. I'm getting a little shaving every time I make a pass. Now when your scrap stock gets down where it's flat on the workpiece, that's the thing that cut. And that groove is adequate for this job. Now, it's not necessary to use wood to fill the groove for a string inlay. Several years ago, I did a product woodworkers club, and this block of wood was one of them. You get a pointer here. This middle string is wood. This string is plastic wood, and this string is caulking compound. And the reason I brought this to this demonstration is the artificial materials are still in place. I haven't shipped out. If they did get a coat of finish put on them. One of the things you can use to fill with, I have found excellent, is, and I'm not selling this stuff, but Elmer's Wood Filler. It's a plastic material. It comes in many colors. This is their white. This is what they call natural. And you can get it in all the wood colors. Now in the interest of not taking this program to last too long, rather than fill this piece and wait three hours for it to dry, and then show you what we do. I'm going to show you a piece I have already prepared with this material. Here's a piece of wall. And here's the material that's dried. So I simply take a chisel. I don't know if this is the best way, but it works real fine for me. I don't want you to chip out. So take this chisel, cut off the excess, and take a scraper and scrape it smooth. not finished but that's all right that's what it's going to look like now I took a shortcut on this piece walnut has such 
large grain pours that along your groove this plastic material will feed up the little pores and leaves white spatches on it. I put a coat of varnish on this wood before I filled it. Now, in case you think that this is sort of unethical to use something other than wood, let's remind you that every day you're probably wearing clothes that have nylon, polyester in them. That maybe is unethical too. But the point of this thing is to make this attractive wood. And this does it. Now I want to go over to a former to a piece of work I did some time ago and talk to you just a little bit more. But Jim, you were talking about the, the process of inlay that you just did. So this is this is an example of, of using that inlay in a piece of furniture. Yes, that's right. And incidentally, I cut all these grooves with the scrap stock we just used didn't wear out and it didn't break. This is filled with this Elmer's wood filler. All the straps on the legs, the bands around the top. Uh, I'm very well satisfied with it. Also, Tom, hold this straight from this side. Okay. I thought this plain top was a little simple, so I wondered what to do. Messed it up. A little experimenting and I came up with this berry pattern and it's made with that Elmer's filler and I have four of these in this, in this temporary top the false top to this little stand I think there is some opportunity for an enterprise well, that makes it interesting when you Pick up the tray, you find a little surprise under there. Yeah. With the, uh, the inlay underneath yeah, the, the tray. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think there's room for an enterprising person to develop some other woodworking art ideas. Uh, I'm not the person, but after I did this for this stand, I toyed with some more. And this piece has a Octagon, I guess, Tom. Mm -hmm. And this is a, another berry with two leaves. I did two different colors of fill. One is a natural, and the berries are white. Right. I kind of like that. Mm -hmm. I did this, incidentally, with a carving gouge. Set it in the right place and hit it twice. One for the inner side, one for the outer side. And it worked. Mm -hmm. Having done that, I did this little experiment, wildflowers, berries, whatever, foliage, but, but that's as far as I've got with it. I think it's fairly attractive in a folksy type of way. Another thing I did with that material, I was trying to come up with an interesting border on a wood carving. And I made this strip, and I drilled holes at regular intervals. Repetitive. Yes, mm -hmm. and then I used a carving gouge, a vayner, and cut these connecting grooves. Mm -hmm. I went back the other day and filled that much with this plastic wood filler. It gives a striking contrast. It does. And I don't think it's out of place on good, wood, on good furniture. It also allows for a great deal of creativity. That's what I like to see. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, one more, one more method of decorating furniture this way is you can buy string inlay that's multicolored and in a pattern. Uh, the good woodworking shops will sell that, and I have a music box here that I made for my friend, and it has string inlay in it, and this is pre-manufactured string. Now this stuff is only about 30, 40,000 sticks, so you can't cut your grooves very deep. I used a router table to cut these grooves, and to get them the right width, I used a, a shim against the fence, mm -hmm. 
And then I took the shim away and widened the amount that the shim was. Okay. And these fit pretty good. So you you placed your inlay before you mattered the corners and I guess I did. The so, so that the corners would come out right. Mm -hmm. That's true. I love that. Well, I'm kind of pleased with it. Jim, I couldn't help from admiring the tray. I notice you've got a, a cherry inlay around the outer edge, which provides a subtle, subtle contrast, which is a little different than the, the white inlay. Yes, it is. Yeah, I thought it very suitable. Interestingly, I'll tell you how I cut that groove. Okay. I made an oval, which is this, as a pattern, and I cut the groove with a dremel tool with a tiny driver bit. I clamped this, in, the, clamped this in place and used the edge of this mm -hmm. as my guide. Okay. Otherwise, I could never have cut that groove. Now, this piece in the center, and as you say, this is cherry, this cross is cherry, and this is four pieces of uh, maple veneer that I had. Bird's eye maple. Bird's eye maple. Given to me by a very close friend who said it was scrap and he was going to throw it away. Scrap no longer. Uh, also, so <clears throat> it's not strange you like it, but I, but I really uh, do appreciate your work of the carved rim. So this is carved out of one solid piece of wood. Yes, it is. Well, it's carved out of one board, three pieces glued up. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the same. It's the same board. Uh, I enjoy this, and every time I tackle it, I wonder how in the world I'm going to do it. But what I did this time, I made a cardboard pattern, which encompassed from the center of one to the center of one. Okay. From here to mm -hmm. here. Then I divided my rim in the number of parts that would fit that. Then I drilled these holes with a forstner bit and threw with excess stock and cut this on the bandsaw and cut this on the bandsaw. Now these actually vary in length slightly mm -hmm. to make it come out to fit the amount of uh, periphery that we had. Mm -hmm. I can enjoy doing well, that. This is a fine example of craftsmanship. Well, thank you, Tom. I think you'd be a minority. <laughs> us in your home and shop today and show us some of the things that you made and about how you do string inlay. It's been very inspirational to me and we thank you very much. Well thank you for coming. I enjoyed it.